Yo, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to teach you a utility move that can be applied to many effects that you do. I won't tell you what that move is right now because the name of the move will give away the secret to the performance I'm about to show you. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is a demonstration on shuffle tracking you explain to your participant. All right, so you instruct them to take the deck and uh, slap some cards face down on the table like this and keep doing that, uh, shuffling cards around like this, throwing cards down. And as they're doing this, you explain to them that the reason why they're doing all this face up stuff is so you can keep track of important cards as they shuffle, hence the name shuffle tracking, right? So right now I know exactly where the kings are in this case in the deck. See, I'll show you. You don't believe me, but I'll show you. See, look, uh, there's a king right there. There's a king, uh, where's the other one? Did I miss one? There's a king uh, right there. There's another king right there. And the last king is a little further down the deck. Uh, see, the king is right there. Now I know you're not too convinced and you're not too impressed. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it with some more difficult cards. See, that was a bad joke, and it was really to distract you from the fact that I was keeping track of the better cards in the deck, the aces, and right now I know exactly where they are in the deck. They're at positions 12, 24, 36, and 42. See, if I just cut those cards right exactly at the positions that I just mentioned, I should get, if I did this right, the four aces in the deck. See, check it out. Oh, wait a minute. That's a king. That's a king. That's a king. If I got all the kings, what do you think these cards are? Well, like I said, I was trying to misdirect you and distract you from the fact that I was really finding the aces. Okay, so the name of this move is the Charlie Miller Strip Out Edition, or the Charlie Miller uh, Up Jog Edition. And what it is this, say, let's say you want to exchange four cards for the uh, four aces, okay? So what you need to do is get those cards you want to switch in on top of the deck. And uh, let's say you want to bring the kings out, and so you want to get one of the kings um, on the bottom of the aces here. And then any random card on top of those aces. So from top down, you have any random card that one, two, three, four aces, and below those, uh, one of the kings there that's on top of the deck. Now you just uh, distribute the other kings anywhere in the middle of the deck uh, face up like this. And by the way, I uh, created this routine around the just the move itself, and I called this move Good Time Charlie, after of course Charlie and Miller. All right, so you the deck is set up like this, and you explain to them that you wanna show them how shuffle tracking works. And so you hand them the deck, and you just uh, coach them through Ben Earl's uh, Spectator Shuffle Holdout, uh, which is this. They take the deck, and you ask them to spread over a group of cards. As long as it's more than uh, six cards, you're fine, okay? So ask them to spread over about uh, a dozen cards or so, and they do that, and they, you ask them to throw them face up on the table like this. And the whole shuffle tracking uh, presentation really justifies this whole face up shuffle thing. So as soon as they do that first one, ask them to shuffle these and keep doing that, uh, throwing face up cards down there till there's no cards left. So you ask them to shuffle cards around, throw cards face up, shuffle some more, throw cards down. And as they're doing this, you explain that the reason why you're having them do them face up is so you can keep track of important cards uh, throughout the shuffle, hence the name shuffle tracking. Now all this shuffle does is really shuffle the deck um, except for that top stock that you have there. So the deck is face up on the table and it's at a sort of a joke you say, uh, in this case I was going for the kings. I was memorizing where all the kings are and as, as a stupid thing you just go through and spread through and just up jog the kings. See look there's a king right there. I knew exactly where it was. And this is sort of like a tongue-in-cheek sort of a stupid thing. But it's justified later, okay? So just go through and up jog all the kings as you see them. See there's another king right there and uh, the other one's right here. And since you know where the for the king is, you can say the other one's uh, further down the deck oh, right over here. And here's where the move comes in. When you're going down to that last king, uh, that's part of the, that's the king and part of your setup, you want to do sort of singles when you get to it uh, because you don't want to flash all those aces there. So when you get to it, what you want to do is pinky pull down that 
random card that uh, just a random card that was on top of the deck you just pinky pull down that card or you can buckle it like this uh, either way you want to get a pinky break above that random card so you're doing this uh, spreading singles see there's the last king right there and as you show them this and sort of gesture to it that's when you get your little break there and then what you're going to do is Act like you just updrog this king and pull these down like this, but what really happens is you updrog the king and all the aces. And by having this break here, you can it it just simulates that, right? So you just really updrog that whole block of five cards as the single king, right? So uh, you updrog this whole block, do that pull down, and just move that single card back like this. So the whole block of aces plus that king is just. Um, disguising itself as a single card but that happens as you close up the deck so there's a lot of cover so you do this as you close up the deck like this so they can't really s nothing looks weird right so right now you have just three single kings up jogged and that last king is of course a block with the aces there so as you close up you just strip these out like this and it just looks like you've taken out the kings, turned the deck over, and now since the aces are on top of those kings, simply flip these over and spread off the top four cards which you've just switched in for the four aces. But as you do that, you say, "Okay, well that was a that was that was a bad joke, and this time we'll go for uh, some more difficult cards." And don't draw attention to this whole flipping over and putting down. You want to talk about uh, saying it was a bad joke and saying you will go for harder cards, blah blah blah, as you're doing all this. So this action seems unimportant because you're speaking about something important as you're doing an unimportant action there. All right. So now you say, "Look." How about we go for some more difficult cards? Uh, uh, that was really too distracting to the fact uh, that I was really going for the aces. And in fact, I know exactly where they are in the deck. And you just make up some number, say you go maybe 12, 24, 32, and 46, all right? It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to matter. Just make up some numbers, all right? So now you turn the deck face up and you will produce the kings now, which are on top of the deck with John Bannon's bullet catcher uh, sequence. So what that is, is this. So you'll, uh, and it's gonna look like you just cut to those numbers that you just mentioned, right? Those positions that you just mentioned. So swing over a block of about a quarter of the deck like this, swing cut action into your hand, and then these will be in biddle grip. So turn this hand palm up as you slide this top card here onto those, which will be a king, right? So just repeat that, turn the hand back, palm down, do another quarter of the deck swing cut like this on top of that, and repeat that move like this until you have four reverse cards. And that is John Bannon's bullet catcher move. But at fast speed, it simply looks like you just cut to four random cards, right? I'll do that one more time at speed so you can really uh, appreciate how good it looks, right? So again, the kings are on top. And you just do what exactly what I told you. Uh, do this like this, and it just looks like you're just cutting the random card as you do that, right? It looks very, looks very good. Now I say if I did this right, uh, I should have four aces face up in the deck. And whoops, don't do that. <laughs> That's a different trick. And then spread the deck like this wide to show that. Oh my goodness, what happened here? Say so, uh, if that's a king, that's a king, that's a king, and that's the king. Uh, what do you think is over here? And they say, like I told you, I was really trying to find the aces and that was a distraction uh, from the fact that I did indeed just find them. All right, guys, so as always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me. And if you learned something new, if you got value from the video, do me a huge favor, hit that like button and sub the channel. Until next time, happy practicing. I love you guys.